Hey dudes, it's Whitney here, and with me are two expert Australian Labradoodle breeders from the Worldwide Australian Labradoodle Association, also known as WALA, and they bring 32 years of combined breeding experience, and today they are here to share valuable tips on keeping your doodles safe during the holidays, from food dangers to managing decorations, travel, and more. Let's get started, and I'll hand it over to our guests to introduce themselves, and we can jump right into their essential holiday safety advice. I am Anita Main. Um, I have um, a business in Florida, near Palm Beach, and I've been breeding since 2009. Nice. I'm Susan Davis, um, and I have been breeding since 2005, and I'm located just north of Atlanta, Georgia. Let's just, yeah, get right into it. What tips do you have? I know food is a big issue, uh, especially for those counter surfers. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of them. Doodles are very prone well I, I maybe not just doodles but dogs right mm. uh prone to you know getting on the counters taking whatever food they find uh what are some things we can do to you know avoid that or prevent that and what types of foods you know maybe should we avoid putting on the counters <laughs> all foods <laughs> <laughs> they will eat anything and they will eat you know earbuds so you have to put everything back for away and not have any chairs because they can figure that out too yeah the little ones will jump into the chair even tall kitchen chairs to get onto a table it's not just the counters though it's tables and then i know that some dogs will get into the trash mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. not at my house all of my cans have lids and my kitchen trash in particular has a lock on it oh yeah that's a good idea yeah, but you also have to watch like little kids walking around with their snack. I've had our dogs take it right out of their hand and then they cry. They will take advantage of any loophole. <laughs> yeah. The weakest link. That's what we used to yeah. say. About and, and our sometimes kids. It's, it's no problem. They just get an extra turkey or something and get a stomach ache, but there are things that can harm them. So we have to be especially careful. Kind of on that note, then, you know, with Thanksgiving and just general holiday feasting, you know, we're going to have kids, we're going to have family, maybe some friends over, just house guests and things, you know, they're going to probably want to know what foods they can give your dog and like maybe what tips do you have on making that, making so you're on the same page with, with everyone. Um, there are some human foods that actually are perfectly fine for dogs to have. Like we have our families keep a bag of frozen green beans on hand or carrots. You do have to be careful with carrots. You've got to cut them in a way so that they're not round, round and can get stuck in their thing. But dogs like carrots and will often think of that as a treat. Turkey's really rich. The biggest thing though is cooked bones. That's probably the biggest danger with regard to food, except for things that have xylitol in it. Cooked bones splinter when they're chewing them up, when they go down in normal ways you can bring stuff back up. You don't wanna do that with a bone because if it's splintered when it goes down and then you give them hydrogen peroxide or something to make them throw up, the bones are gonna rip up the insides coming back out. So bones are probably the biggest thing that we worry about here, which is why our kitchen trash can has the lock on it. Yeah, for sure. And you could have things like a, a treat ball, a jar, like, you know, that probably things for the dog and that. Um, you can definitely have things like, like chews, like something like a West Paw that you make a recipe in, even just like applesauce, pumpkin, freeze it, and then that will keep them happy for quite a while. Right. Um, like kids like to share with, like to share. So like Anita said, having a treat jar available for your guests who want to interact with the dog, having appropriate treats, um, that was a great idea, Anita. Oh. We had to do that with my mom, give her her own jar, yep. although it's and amazing it feels special. How, how fast she goes through it. It's shocking. <laughs> <laughs> the rate at which we have to refill it is shocking. She's very always, generous. Always she the is. grandmas, right? Yep. <laughs> and they really it's hard to know them versus the little little ones little children right sneaking them things so, yeah. yes and you do have to be aware you have to be aware of the ingredients in the different recipes you make if you use something if you make something for the holiday that has xylitol in it it is xylitol is so toxic 
so much worse than chocolate. Everybody knows chocolates. Generally, most people know, you know, chocolate is bad for dogs, grapes, raisins, but xylitol is far more toxic in smaller amounts. Um, so if you just read your labels of any ingredients you are putting in any of your recipes, because uh, we just had a puppy who um, ate some chew chewing gum, pulled it out of her purse, ate it, and he was in the emergency room for days. He almost died. Um, he he is okay for now, but they are still having to like check his blood every week. And he ate like two little tiny pieces wow. of gum that had xylitol in it. Yeah, that's not good. Mm -mm. Yeah, and if you're a baker, watch you know keep the bread dough if it's rising or something, keep it away because that can expand in their stomach and that can be a huge problem too. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, okay. So that's, yeah, that's good advice. I know like also alcohol, definitely don't give your dogs alcohol, even if you think it's funny. Uh, especially <laughs> yeah, you see funny. that on YouTube, unfortunately. Yeah, that's, you know, big no-no. So kind of along those notes, uh, you know, with the food, maybe you have house guests over. Do you have any tips on, you know, how to keep your dog in a manageable state during, you know, when guests are over, or maybe if you have a puppy, what does that look like? Uh, well, you definitely want to keep the dog, the dogs safe. So you want to have a, especially if it's a puppy, you want to have a safe place for the dog to be. So it could be another room and put a sign on the door saying, do not open the door. Um, or it could be a, an X pen that you set up in the family room or a crate. Because, you know, things can happen fast and, um, you know, a child could pick up a puppy and drop it. Uh, the puppy could fall off the couch. Uh, the puppy could get into something it shouldn't. And then even older dogs can get into like the garbage or whatever. It's just, just with a lot of people, things can happen that wouldn't normally happen. While it's really important to socialize a young puppy, um, you don't want to overwhelm them because puppies typically go home during that first fear stage, um, which can last up to like 12 weeks. And so, you know, fast moving toddlers or big crowds, it, it can be overwhelming. So having that safe space for them that Anita mentioned is important. Um, our rule at our house, I have five children that have been raised since I started doing this. Um, if they were, if anyone was visiting our house, if they were under 13, they had to be sitting on their bottoms on the floor to interact with puppies. Um, they also don't have fully developed depth perception till they're 12 weeks, around 12 weeks. So if say a six-year-old is sitting on the couch with the puppy, but then the six-year-old gets bored and goes to do something else, the puppy will just walk off the end of the couch and it only takes a second um, for an injury to happen. So all of those um, interactions need to be managed. And if you have a house full of company, sometimes that's hard to keep an eye on all of that, those situations with your young puppy. Another thing to consider with a young puppy is that some of the particularly yucky doggy germs can live um, in dirt and on surfaces for years. Like I have heard between three and five years. So you want to make sure your guests, uh, their shoes are clean or they kick them off at the door just in case they had been at a dog park with their own dog, you know, a few weeks before to make sure they don't bring any of those germs into your house. Um, it's tricky. It feels like a lot. Sometimes maybe waiting till after the holidays is a better time to bring home a new puppy. But um, if your family also wants to bring over their dogs, you need to make sure that that dog is fully vaccinated. We keep wipes at every door of our house and in our cars to wipe paws of any dog when they come back from the vet or the groomer or when we, you know, have a dog come over from a different house. I mean, we have, you know, Anita and I have to be particularly careful because we have new, you know, neonates. Um, but even with a puppy that's gone home nine weeks, six months, at any age, you just want to make sure that you're not exposing them to biohazards. And just, just to add one other thing is when the people come in, you should tell them, you know, we have a dog or we have a puppy um, and ask them to put their purses somewhere where the dogs can't get into them, where they might find, you know, gum or 
candy or something and medications because a lot of people keep medications in their purse and the dogs can just chew right through those little plastic containers and that could be tragic if they would get hold of some medications well i guess on that note uh you know with the medications and being safe you know with other things right like it's the holidays we're talking about so christmas trees lights cords like we set a this poisonous mistletoe right lilies so what oh, uh, yeah. what other stuff have you seen you know particular literally around the holidays should people be aware of i had a family who had like a nine month old dog that plucked a glass ornament off a low hanging branch and crushed it it was glass cut up the inside of its mouth walked wow. through it um so you want to hang fragile ornaments high um like we don't do any like if you have a kid like yeah like you basically want to toddler proof your house to avoid any really any any risks because the holidays you know a lot of us are very distracted and we're engaging sometimes with family we haven't seen in a really long time and it's just easy to um not be actively supervising the dog so uh, we'll encourage families when the dog is out and about with everybody that it be tethered to the human so mm -hmm. it only has the six foot perimeter to, <laughs> between you and the end of the leash there's a, just a lot of things the cords um, metal in the cords or batteries um, for toys and stuff um, they can uh, once they get into their stomach, those metals, and some are obviously worse than other others, but it can leach into their bloodstream pretty quickly and cause a very, very dangerous. Um, or get tangled and, you know, tangled up and choke. Like, yeah, like poison. possible. Yep. Mm -hmm. The getting tangled too, that can happen. But um, even older dogs can like, we had, you know, a couple of our dogs, because you don't think about it, you know, when you're busy, like you said, and we had one unwrap a present that we got from a friend and we didn't know that she had baked all these cookies and candies and, oh, no. <laughs> and he opened the present for us and, and was happily eating it. Um, and then when my son was little, he brought home, they had made ornaments out of cookies. And of course you got to hang them on the tree. And I thought, well, I'll put them on the bottom so they don't break. And we came in and the dog, all that was left was the ribbons. He found them all and ate them all. Wow. So the way you put it, toddler proof your home. That's a really good. Anything under four feet is game. Yeah. That's what my, some of my documentation says in preparing for puppy. Anything under four feet is game. Their favorite things are things that, that smell good, like food or things that smell bad, like underwear, sweaty socks. They will take advantage of any opportunity available. And they'll create opportunities all on their own because, you know, doodles are intelligent dogs. So you're saying put away your dirty laundry before house guests come over. Which I guess is a natural <laughs> kind of a natural thing. Don't leave your dirty underwear out. Probably forever. don't close don't close the dog in a room that say one of your kids didn't clean. Like just go, you know, put the yeah. dog in a crate. Teenage kids are notorious for leaving yes. dirty laundry. I remember my daughter, you couldn't even walk in her room. That would not be a good room for a dog. No. Right. Just be smart. Actively supervise. If you're not actively supervising the dog, whether it's an adult or a puppy, then the dog should be put into a safe dog-proofed area. This is also a really good case for like crate training. Because I know, you know, luckily, even though my doodle Chloe has never been particularly misbehaving, but you know, she was never crate trained and we tried mm. kind of, but <laughs> she just doesn't get into things. And I, I guess for me, we're lucky in that way, but I know a lot of other, you know, dogs, doodles just don't, they can't, they can't help themselves, you know? So <laughs> yeah, well, you get into trouble uh, fast. I know you had some tips on holiday travel, what tips or stories might you have to share? Um, well, just make sure you bring everything the dog needs, medication, uh, a water bowl, food, you know, all the usual things. Choose, you want to bring the, um, an ID tag, make sure they're microchipped if they're not, and bring the number. So, you know, because things can happen when you're traveling too, when you go to a strange rest stop and the dog suddenly pulls away from your child is trying to hold him on a leash or something and 
um, if you have things in place, then it won't be necessarily a disaster. Um, and then I guess way ahead of time, if you're going to not take the dog, you need to be looking for, you know, house sitters or places where you can leave the dog. Check reviews. If you're looking for a facility, they are not all equal. Read reviews, go visit the place ahead of time. If you have the option to pay a little extra to have more human interaction, you know, doodles in particular are very social animals. So you want to give them as much opportunity for that while in your absence um, as possible. <clears throat> when you're traveling too, like we always look for places to stop um, that aren't rest stops in particular, just because those typically are places lots of dogs unknown to you would visit. So again, we're concerned about the biohazards. Um, so traveling with the wipes to wipe the paws before they get back in. Uh, I actually tell people if there's a sign that says, walk your dog here, I tell them to go to the other side of the grassy area, <laughs> walk the dog over mm -hmm. there. Um, it, you, their health and safety is your number one priority or should be. So protecting them from all the things, um, getting away from you, getting darting into traffic. There's just so many dangers. Yeah. Like I would encourage you not to have, say, a five-year-old holding a leash, for instance, because dogs get spooked. So. Yeah. I know for me personally, uh, um, I've been house sitting for a long time done like over a dozen house sits and I think it's just a great way to leave your dog at your home right if you can't bring them with you at least they're in their place they're in their territory they know everything about the place they're familiar with it and then somebody like me comes into house sit and I just take care of the dog so at least the dog is comfortable I know some people however have this aversion to like letting strangers in their house, which is totally understandable. But if you're not one of those people and you might need to travel, you know, without your dog, consider hiring a house sitter. There's like mm -hmm. really good websites out there that connect you with people who have been background checked and yep. yeah, it's totally, it's totally a good alternative to, you know, boarding as mm -hmm. you mentioned. Yes. We try, I try to avoid, um, av avoid that as much as possible boarding like my first choice would be to have the family look for places which lots of places are pet friendly but if you can't or if you're traveling by plane and so it, you know just doesn't make sense then um, then my next choice would be to have a house sitter and you can check to check at your vet sometimes the vet tech's there they're always looking for um little side hustles or whatever um to babysit yeah, a lot of young people these days are or people that even live with their parents, you know, responsible young adults that yeah. would like to stay somewhere else. Stay somewhere else for, <laughs> for a weekend or whatever. I hear that. <laughs> yes. Anyway. Yep. But uh, ultimately, it's just back to what's best for the <clears throat> mental health of the dog. Um, but boarding facilities tend to be significantly more stressful on the dog than their immune system gets lowered. Um so looking for other alternatives is what I encourage her. Okay, so we talked about gatherings, having house guests. I think we should talk also about, you know, if you do holiday parties, which are probably a little different than just gatherings, right? Um, parties meaning like loud music, fireworks, maybe, you know, like loud dancing. Here. what kind of what kind of tips or or stories might you have? We did a 1920s murder mystery for, for New Year's Eve, um, it, 2019 to 2020. So it was right before the pandemic. Uh -huh. and you had to wear full costuming. So everybody was wearing hats be coming. and glitter. You know, there was a lot of fireworks going on in the background and um, those kinds of things and poppers and champagne bottles opening. But it was, there was just so much going on. I mean, there's about 30 people. Um, well, not to mention your, everyone was dressed up. So correct. Yeah, yeah that's true. Dog, Top hats. So like what? Mm -hmm. is happening? Yeah, that's another thing to mention is the costumes. I mean, well, and that can be wear. very stressful 
on a young puppy or an adolescent in the second fear stage um, if they're not used to it. So it is good to practice noises like that when you're not in the middle of a party so that you the dog is more used to those sounds. So take advantage of when you have a thun there's a thunderstorm in your area, you know, give the dog treats, um, teach them how to self-soothe, those kinds of things before party day. Um, so and you don't want to tell them it's okay. And don't tell them that, that it's okay because you don't want to uh, in, reinforce the, if you say it's okay, that something bad won't happen. We have at times, like when we're socializing a litter of puppies, for instance, it in that five to seven week range, we have people specifically come over that are wearing big sunglasses and a baseball hat and things like that to make sure that they are used to seeing all kinds of things because you just don't know you know what they need to be able to handle so make sure they can handle anything so my guess is just you know keep them in a safe place again maybe in an empty room or x pen and like she said have white noise or there's dog tv if you have cable um if they like that or yep. we run box they yeah. have um music for dogs ears um plug in scent the the uh, um adapt or something adaptal collars yep Right, the, the pheromone. The pheromone. I said that that works. Um, my trainer actually recommended that too, and said it really just depends on the dog. But that at least fifty percent of the time, the people that sh they recommended to see an improvement in calming, um, chewing <clears throat> is actually a natural, instinctive behavior dogs do to ease their own anxiety when they're chewing on something like an antler or a bully stick or whatever. It lowers their cortisol levels. So you want to make sure when you put a dog in another room or whatever, that you give them access to something to chew on, you, or you could do um, like a Kong with frozen pumpkin, or, you know, you can even put some kibble in it with some peanut butter, stick it in the freezer overnight. So especially if they're going to be put up for a couple of hours while you're entertaining, that is, you want to give them the tools they need in order to self-soothe. And so, you know, a snuggle puppy, the chews, the adaptal plugins, there's just lots of, there's lots of options, but what works for one doesn't always work for every dog. So you really have to be willing to experiment and try before the day it's happening so that you know what will help calm your dog. Yeah, and that is important. Yeah. Like sometimes the dog will do better um, if you cover their crate, like with a towel or an old sheet or something because they feel more closed in so it's a safer they feel safer because you've enclosed them a little bit especially during times that are stressful doesn't mean they need it all the time just means when you're going to have 30 people in your house in um, costumes and drinking and hats and whatever yeah. make, make sure you're protecting and preserving your dog's mental health because that's your responsibility so I know we've talked a lot about, you know, puppies and maybe older dogs and how to keep them safe during the holidays. What about people who don't have a puppy, but are considering bringing home a puppy during the holidays? Do you have any tips or stories about that? Lots of people want to bring puppies home at the holiday time. Sometimes, you know, as a surprise um, for their kids or whatever, and um, as breeders, uh, we're slaves to mother nature. So sometimes we have puppies going home at the holiday time. Um, and the thing is, you just want to remember some things like when you bring home a new baby, it is the a, a dog baby. It is the first time that that dog has been separated from its mom, its litter mates and any humans it has ever known in its whole life. So there are things you have to do to help that dog transition to your home. And sometimes um, the holidays are really busy times with things happening at school, parties and all the things that we do when we celebrate. So when you're deciding whether to do it or not or hold off, just make sure that you're considering everything. Like, um, so getting puppy on a routine is gonna be really critical for potty training. Um, predictable schedules are key, bonding, 
we need to spend a lot of time bonding with the puppy. How much time realistically do you in your family have to do these things and to start training? I mean, training begins on day one. You, if you, there are behaviors you don't want your puppy to do when they're an adult, then you start that as soon as they come home at eight, nine, 10 weeks. Um, if you want to do a surprise, there are a lot of different creative ways that you can do that. Um, like we've had families, for instance, do like um, scavenger hunts on um, holiday morning that ends up with uh, a dog crate, a little crate with a little snuggle puppy and a big bow. And then they go pick up the dog after the holidays. Or we have had people who um, took puppies home on the day. Um, and as long as your family can manage that from a time, um, emotional energy and all of that, you're adding another member to your household. So we would encourage you to do this year round anyway. You want to make this decision thoughtfully. Just make sure you're thinking of everything. There's a lot of good resources out there, but you need time to properly socialize the dog, expose them to the right things. And sometimes like when puppies are ready to go home and it's two weeks before the holiday, how do you manage that? Um, there's just, there's a lot of um, opportunity there to still do things right that gives the puppy everything they need and works for your family. But that's a decision you guys have to make as a family. We had a family that we had happened to have a litter going home um, like the first week of December. And it was a surprise for the kids and they um, had a box, but that had wrap on it, but the four sides were all folded inside to the box. Okay. And the kids got home from school cause they were still in school and they made it look like it had a big bow on top. And the kids like got off the bus and came and it was sitting on the porch and there was a bed inside and the puppy was actually totally sleeping and not paying any attention. But then the kids were like, oh, yay. And then the puppy was like, oh, is it time? Is the show happening now? And it jumped up and you could see the little head come out of the video. Oh. It was such a cute little video. That is cute. And, you know, and then they immediately all went there and then they took puppy inside and did introductions or whatever. And then they had, you know, a couple of weeks before the craziness and chaos of the holidays were upon them. It's a good memory for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love that video. It was just a really cute one. Um, we one time had a family that wanted to come the day after we coordinated and worked with them and they um, told their kids they were going to visit a petting zoo, <laughs> which they weren't far off. But anyway, they drove up um, and my daughter had set up an X-Pen in her front yard with um, three or four of the puppies from this particular litter. And the people pulled into the driveway and the kids were like, what are we doing? And the parents said, oh, we're just visiting this particular family. Their kids had named the puppy already. And I think that they had been talking about it, but it was planned for next year. Anyway, when the kids were bending over the X-Pen and they said, oh, what is that one? What is that one? And my daughter said, oh, that puppy is named Duke. And they said, oh, that's what we're going to name our puppy. And my daughter said, really? that's because that is your puppy. Oh. <laughs> and it had a little bow on its collar. It was so cute. Anyway, that video was fun too. But so they were shocked. They were shocked, but it was the day after. So, you know, most people I would think, you know, are willing to do that kind of stuff to make the moment special, you know, for you and your family. We try really hard to meet people where they are and help them and whatever. Okay. But, but, you know, our number one concern is that the puppy will be able to get what it needs however that looks for that family and so just educate yourself on what right what the puppy needs and then you can right design your day around it and your time around it yeah and it can be done it, it can be done day of it can be done the week before you know like I said since you know mother nature is ultimately in charge for us on when babies go home um you know you, you have to plan ahead. Like, yeah, that's, that's, I think, key to making it successful for everybody. Yeah. And I know like on Doodle Dudes, we have a couple of articles and resources um, for anyone who's maybe on a wait list or 
mm-hmm. hasn't hasn't taken home their puppy yet ways to prepare themselves but also their family members and their kids on you know when that day finally comes how do we all get on the same page yes and just make sure everything goes smoothly so i can link to those in the description along with a lot of other things we talked about yeah. Uh, but yeah so those were some really great tips and stories and thank you both so much for mm-hmm. sharing them uh and i know that our audience will find them very valuable for ensuring that you know our doodle safety is priority during the festive season and to our audience have a safe holiday season and a happy new year and if you're ever thinking of getting another doodle might you consider australian labradoodles and the reputable breeders at walla happy holidays thanks happy holidays bye whitney bye Bye. susan